What's up, gang? Okay, here we go. Day, uh, what is it? Day number nine, tighter tummy. That's right. Tomorrow is the finale of it. Uh, you're doing your <clears throat> medium to high carb day today, and you'll basically cut tomorrow and then drink lots of water, and then day 11, get up first thing before you drink water, before you eat anything, definitely uh, do your measurements. Do your measurements just like you did. Reference the measurement guide. Uh, PDF that I uh, gave you that will show you how to measure, where to measure, how to measure, how to come up with an accurate reading for it, and you're going to be down. You're going to be down one to two inches. That's what the goal of this program is, and we're again supplementing that with a, uh, I don't know why I showed you band. We're not supplementing with bands. We're supplementing it with kettlebells, some kettlebell cardio to do in addition to your main workouts. So we've got another one today. We're going to do 250 swings. We had a couple days of 200 to do. Now we're going to do 250 swings today. We're going to break it up. I want this to be a little bit of um, swings with mobility, right? Uh, we've done swings with strength training, uh, little swings with core, uh, just straight swings. Today will be swings and mobility work. Mobility, I always say, is the thing that keeps you in the game. We're talking joint mobility, not just stretching. Uh, all right, so what are you going to need for this? Well, you're going to need a kettlebell. Uh, if you only have one, that's great. If you want to go lighter some rounds, uh, heavy for others, I'm going to... Bring this up just a little bit. Bring this up a little closer. But uh, you will need a, uh, whoop, that was not good. Uh, you are gonna need a, a, a band to stretch with. And uh, what else? I've got a bench, this could be at home, this could be a sofa. We're tilted, we're crooked. Straighten this out. Try that, okay, I think that's square. Uh, you also need a, uh, a foam roller, okay? So uh, we're gonna jump into this little sweat and stretch. Make sure everything's going, and uh, let's jump into it. Start off kind of, you want to start off lighter with this, it's great. 25 swings coming up, and then we'll do a host of uh, some flexibility drills and some mobility drills and all. So let's start off here. 25 coming right now. There's five. Ten. Fifteen. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now if you have a foam roll, you can do this at home up against the wall. I'm gonna do some calf ankle flexibility work. So just elevate your foot. This could be a wall. Actually the uh what do you call it? I was about to say door post, but like, you know, in the, in the door frame or whatever. There's a word for that, I'm not thinking. But uh, elevate your foot as high as you can up on there, and you're getting a calf stretch. Calf ankle mobility is kind of one of the biggest limiting factors. It's probably the first thing that goes in life is our ankles and our ability to dorsiflex and fully extend out. This gets your calf. I can also step back and get the knee more forward, and this will lengthen out this Achilles tendon. All right, so I'm just gonna do 20 to 30 seconds here. Slide, glide, kind of oscillate left to right. And this is a, uh, this is my tightest ankle. So I do start off with that one. I'm gonna do this again just about 30 seconds. It gives you a little bit of rest, a little bit of joint work, 25 more. There's 10. Nine. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Now on the left side. Again, you kind of determine between this, uh, where is your greatest Limitation is it up in the calf, the upper part, right behind the, the shin, or down right around that Achilles tendon? You can kind of pick and choose. Mine is 
right there. So I've got a little bit of a little bit of interior tendon work right there. And this is just great to do. This whole workout series, by the way, it gives you a chance to get in some conditioning, give you a chance to get in some workout, an easy workout, but it's also a chance to improve upon some things. I always think about what do I need to improve during these next 10, 12 minutes. Round three. If you got a band, you can also use a towel at home for this. We can do a little band work. My goal is to uh, get some flexibility in the hamstrings, so lengthen out the hamstrings, but also activate this hip a little bit. So I'm going to start doing some dynamic work here. Basically flex, extend, extend, try different angles. And I can also do, do some static stretching on this whole side. If it's more your hamstring, more vertical. If it's that outer hamstring area, you basically have three highways of it. And people are typically tighter and have less motion in the outer part. So bring it across the body is good. But you can also get that anterior part also. It's really good. You can't beat the good old, good old band stretch work. And again, I like to add some dynamic motion to it. Awesome. And this stuff, uh, I call this active recovery because, you know, you have to recover between sets and rather than just standing here, you're getting something done. You're actually improving yourself while you're resting. Thus the term active recovery. I didn't coin that term, by the way. It's just what I call it. This is also a chance if you've got some corrective work you want to do, you spend time on that. You are doing a follow along with me, so you have to follow along with me, work on the things I do, but you can also work on this yourself. If you have a really tight hamstring, work to first get full extension of the knee. That means this is the knee bent, that's extending it out. Can you get full knee extension? You may have to go a little bit lower and then work your way up until you get full vertical. You know, ideally, you come right here and extend straight up, full extension, that may be tight. Also notice, this leg is bent, okay? That's gonna be easier to get knee extension. That's gonna be harder. So make it easier, make it harder, make it work for you. Add some dynamic movement to it. Just can't go wrong with this. And particularly if you have a desk-oriented job, your hamstrings, because we sit, they shorten, the glutes deactivate. So when you need to turn your body on, that means if you have to like go, move, the glutes is what drives the hips, and the hips drive the body. If you can't turn on, because uh, they actually call it, it's called, I didn't come up with it, glute amnesia. The glutes forget how to fire. It's where we get injured and a whole host of things you don't want to deal with. So the bottom line is keep your hips active, keep your hamstrings stretched out. Round five, I believe.
So I put that off to the side. By the way, just uh, so you get a sense of this is this will be an awesome off day workout. Could also be a post workout to get in some additional cardio we can talk about. This is actually my pre workout routine. So I'm gonna do a workout after this. Uh, it's a little bit more on to the strength side of things, so I'm doing this for about 10, 15 minutes. I'll get in, so I'll get my heart rate up, get the body and, and the joints heated up, and get a whole host of mobility work in, so I'll feel good for the workout, but you can do it either way, pre-workout, post-workout, or off days, it all kind of works. This is the elevated pigeon. You can do your sofa, ottoman, bench box, whatever you can. You can also just do this on the floor, but, Extend that leg back, and then what I want to do is sink down until I get the maximum uh, possible stretch in this glute hip region. This is your, it's a ball and socket, it's a hip rotator, so I want it to be able to move because I'm going to be doing some goblet squats in my workout, and sometimes if that, if that ball and socket, show it this way, doesn't work, you get, you'll get, you You'll get a pinchiness in the bottom of the squat because it doesn't have, you got a clear space for it. That's got to be able to move well, that's what I'm saying. So I love the elevated pigeon. And you can work as slow as you need to, plus the elevated allows you to get a little bit of reach. You can't really do this on the floor, but there's nothing wrong with the floor. So make it work for you. Plus I like to work on a little bit of breath work while I'm doing this. Okay, we are 125 swings in, I believe. Here we go, round six. Now I'm going to do pigeon stretch on the other side. Can this? I tell you, uh, your bed. I don't depend on your bed. That is, to me, one of the best options because a it's soft, and so it's like when you do uh, when you do it on the floor or you do it on like one of our plyo boxes. It can be a little rough, even the aerobic step. But your bed, man, it's uh, especially for people that maybe can't get down on the floor, or they have difficulty with it, they can, it's almost like a standing pigeon, and you just kind of sink your body down to where you're comfortable, and then I've got this, my right side is tighter than my left side, so I spend a little bit more of uh, doing some dynamic work, meaning I'm gonna flow, try to work and press into those corners that have a little bit less range of motion in them, and I also spend a little bit more time with it, so. Cool thing about this is you get uh, the whole workout improves you. The swings improve your hip development and your conditioning, and this improves joint mobility and joint health. So uh, it's like no waste of time. It's not like you're sitting around. I always give the classic example. I used to be in a corporate gym, um, you know, typical big box gym, treadmills, TVs, and uh, you know, the guys would go over here and do bench press, the ladies will go over here and do the treadmill, they're watching TV, right, and the guy does a set of bench and then watch the sports center for five minutes, then comes back and does another set of bench, you know. The girl will just get on there and walk for an hour watching TV, so uh, nothing against that. Anything you do is better than nothing typically, but uh, there are more efficient ways of getting the job done. Now, I'm going to do elevated prayer stretch, 
So come down right here. Elevate your hands again. Box, bench, sofa, ottoman. So you can elevate your head and then drive through. And I love this one, especially when I'm doing overhead pressing work because it gets me into that, lengthens out your traps, triceps. And I have a tighter side, a much tighter side, so I spend a little bit more time angling over there, working that out. Doing a little breath work. We only got three rounds down, three rounds to go, I should say. Awesome, okay. All right, let me know how you're doing. By the way, if you will, I don't have the capability, uh, thanks to YouTube, of going live. I gotta have a thousand subscribers before they'll let me have that feature. I would love to do some YouTube live. Can't do it, don't have enough followers. So if you will, please like, share, subscribe this video. Definitely subscribe if you will. Help me get that subscriber count up. And maybe one day I can do cool things like the rest of the world. All right, here we go. Now here is a good deep squat mobility drill. And you want to have, so I'm doing squats after this, this is kind of movement prep for it. But if you have knee issues, one of the best things you can do is to get into deep knee flexion. Taking your joints through full range of motion. If we, it's a, it's a use it or lose it analogy. If you don't, um, take for instance, bad example, but they have like, they're raising toilet seats up because people can't squat deep enough, they've lost that range of motion. Why? Because they don't practice deep squatting. And if you don't use it, your joints don't, can't go through that range of motion. So all that being said, this is great for the health of your knees, is to take them into some assisted deep squatting and do it with the T-Rex. Here's just, again, sofa, bench box, ottoman. Come down, get into that deep, deep knee flexion and spend some time in this. Now, this may be really uncomfortable at first. Uh, I mean, the first time I ever did it, it was hard. Right? But the more you do it, the more comfortable you feel and the better your knees will feel. You don't have to do any dynamic movement. Come down and just spend some time. You can bring your feet close. But this is awesome once a day to take your knees through full ranges of motion, getting some deep knee flexion. And trust me, you will restore the health and vitality to your knees. As someone who's had ACL meniscus tears, uh, I understand. I understand about patellar tendonitis. I understand about injury. So uh, I'm very, very sensitive to knee problems. It's one of the things that's helped me tremendously. So there we go. Okay, we are, I think, 200 swings in, two rounds ago. Let's get it in. a little torso stretch. If you have your towel or band, you can do this with uh, nothing, but I like to block the feet together and then get in a nice torso stretch. Because again, for a lot of adults, their trunk uh, is often the stiffest part of them. Not necessarily the limbs, although those are too, but it's their trunk. And because they have a stiff trunk, they have a weak trunk. Trunk slash core. It's all kind of integrated together. 
Stiffness often leads to weakness. Okay. All right, we've got our last set. Man, if you've done this, be sure to comment below. Let me know you're doing it. Let me know what, uh, let me know what you like about it. I'll take some constructive criticism. I got it. If there's something you don't like, I want to do some more programs like this. One of the reasons I want to do YouTube Live is so I don't have to like film it, edit it, upload it, and you got to wait for it. I want to be able to go live and you know whoever wants to jump in can jump in. We do some cool follow along workouts. So that is the purpose of all this. Actually, pause. The purpose is for you to have a tighter tummy, but a secondary purpose is to be able to do. Uh, some more things on this channel. So here we go, last set. That's it. 250 swings, 200, 250 swings a day is going to change your body composition. I've said that every single day of this, and it is the truth. Uh, man, keep it up. We'll come back here. We'll do one more tomorrow for day 10. Again, tomorrow, day 10 is going to be more of a cut day. You're going to do a little bit more of a calorie restriction day and really up the water. And hey, uh, you, water, tea, if you need to get a little coffee in, go for it. Go for it. Uh, get it in. And then, uh, Friday morning or day 11, whatever day you're doing this, uh, you want to take those measurements. Let me know what your results are. I can't wait. Already getting some good, good results back, and uh, you're going to get results too, guaranteed. So, uh, congrats. Give me a like. Give me a comment below, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 10.